Hello everyone and welcome back. Today I'm finally spending some time behind the wheel of the Suzuki Swift. A lot of people have been asking about this review and for some reason I haven't driven one yet. So is it a good first car or not? This is like the big question today. I'm gonna show you all its cool features and heads up, it's as good as they say. Stay tuned. <laughs> You're watching this video because you're probably thinking of getting one and want to see if they're as good as you hear. The answer is that it's fun, affordable, reliable, and is most likely one of the best first cars you can buy. But there's more to it, and I'm here to show you why exactly it's such a good option and what do you actually get for your money. Suzuki Lebanon currently offers three trim levels, namely GL, GLX, and Sport, and starts at roughly $17,000. You can easily tell the difference between the base and the sport variant and how the interior slightly differs, but the center screen is fitted as standard on all models. If you enjoy this type of content, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and feel free to skip to any section using the below chapters. So this is how I would imagine you'd be rushing into your car during college. So all right, so we've got a notebook, your laptop, you put these onto your seat right here and then you have your Starbucks coffee. It does fit very beautifully over here in the center. Now, unfortunately, we don't have any dedicated place for the sunglasses, not next to the steering wheel or on top. By the way, the door bins are pretty large. I mean, they can fit as well this Starbucks cup and then two other bottles. And I really appreciate the seating position in this car. Their sporty seats hold you in well with the bolsters on the side and on the bottom. Their cloth seats, which I appreciate as well. I don't care about having leather seats, especially if it's keeping the price low. Uh, the steering wheel is beautifully designed right in front of me. It's flat bottom, so you have more space for your legs, obviously. Paddle shifters, which are plastic, but I mean, I don't mind. It's cool having paddle shifters uh, in this car. The stitching is very high quality. On the left, you have your multimedia stuff, so to control the volume of your music and info to scroll between the very modes uh, you want displayed in the small screen in front of you and I love the fact that they're analog gauges in this car I mean it's so nice it's so refreshing to see that instead of having a screen that's not very high quality and because it's a sports car again it's nice having them especially with the red tachometer there's a lot of really nice details which personally I would want to have in my car and maybe I would consider it if I was looking for a small hatch now in the center we have a touch screen that's very responsive you can see the loud music the volume knob is simply you swipe on that screen uh, for the function then you have their home uh, voice command so great system below it again physical knobs for your climate control guys it's one of those cars where you just sit in here and you know exactly how to use it nothing is complicated you simply have you know your your fan speed uh, your temperature and then finally it's small display in the center for all of that very high quality knobs I have to say Suzuki did amazing in the cabin over here below it we have a USB port and an AUX port which again I was surprised to see and there's this empty space below the handbrake uh, which should be for a phone but I mean pretty much unusable if you have the handbrake you know down when you're driving obviously so you can't really take out your phone uh, if I were to nitpick because you know how I like to do that uh, we don't have a center armrest I feel that's the only shame some people get aftermarket ones for them and we don't have automatic windows for all four simply for the driver we obviously have manual adjustments for the seats but I mean yeah they're pretty easy to use and then we have a telescopic steering wheel you know it goes up and down and front and back what I appreciate about the Suzuki Swift is its attention to detail and the areas that you interact with regularly all of which feel solid and high quality not to mention how practical this little gem is. The back doors open wide and easy with plenty of head and legroom for tall people. The trunk volume grows from 240 to 556 liters when folding the rear seats and you could easily have one of those cute little sunset dates in the back. You also get a car jack in this little compartment. I'd say it's more on the cute spectrum rather than aggressive like those angry little Pomeranians with fake but rather appealing carbon fiber trim. You know what's not fake though? The dual exhaust tips. You get LED headlights with DRLs and fog lamps though with normal incandescent bulb for the turn signals on all trims. The sporty bumper on the Sport adds an extra 50mm and you can see how it compares in size to other cars in the B segment. Best part of the Swift Sport is the driving experience. I promise you it will put a smile on your face every single time. See, it does sound really nice as well if you get the chance to drive one of these cars you'll understand what i mean by fun and now i understand what everybody says about the suzuki swift sport you can see it's just sliding a bit because of that you know lightweight chassis you can play around with this car it's just like a little bee <laughs> oh my god the handling is so good it's puts a smile on your face every time you go for a drive in this thing and the quality i love that seeing with the way you know it feels in your hand it's nice, it's solid, they did not compromise on here. We do have some bit of plastics, as I mentioned earlier, but I mean, that's completely fine with me. I mean, it's a budget car. But the whole car is cute, small, so I genuinely do not mind. 
So yeah, again, a bit of understeer as I mentioned, but I mean, it picks up speed pretty well. <laughs> I'm just ripping these roads in a Swift Sport. Wow, downshift. And I mean, gearbox is very responsive as well. Big thumbs up. I bet it's very fun with a manual transmission. Now, I've heard some complaints about the seats being, you know, a bit too narrow for some, uh, but that's a good thing, in my opinion. For me, they just hold me very well, uh, especially with the nice bolstering on the side, and I love the Sport uh, accent over there on the seat. And I have to reiterate that the Sport on the Suzuki Swift um, is not just cosmetic. In fact, they've dialed this car, they've tuned it to handle so well for a hot hatch. Again, we do have a bit of understeer. <laughs> But I mean, it's expected for a car that's front-wheel drive and this size uh, And don't forget it just weighs around 900 something kilograms So it just depends on what engine you have on there and which transmission So we have a six-speed uh, automatic on here, which does an amazing job by the way It's pretty quick and I love shifting through those paddle shifters You know, it's really the simplicity affordability and reliability which sets it apart from others The car is so light that it genuinely feels so quick Perks of having a 1.4 turbo is the generous fuel efficiency, as it can easily hit 16 km per liter unless you'd like to drive it hard like me. I can't help but thrash it around and go high in the RPM just to hear that 4 foot growl. Speaking of that, the engine can run at as low as 1800 RPM on the highway, but it can get a bit noisy in the cabin. Visibility is comfortable, and the car comes with a host of safety features including 6 airbags. It received 3 stars on the Euro NCAP crash test, while it got 5 stars in the A NCAP, which is slightly less strict on pedestrian safety. I need to emphasize how reliable Suzuki is as a brand, and how relatively cheap it is to maintain. You don't have to worry about missing your oil change, for example, and it's one of those cars that can run with minimal oil in the engine. Not ideal, but doable. You can option it with all-wheel drive and heated seats and mirrors, perfect for winter use, but the old grip model is slightly heavier and is a bit slower than the two-wheel drive version. The Swift is an amazing choice that would be perfect to consider if you fancy an easy to park, easy to use and easy on the pocket little car that's fuel efficient and offers a fantastic blend of connectivity, practicality and reliability. And if your budget is up to $24,000, do not hesitate in getting the Swift Sport. It's phenomenal. I mean, it made me want to buy one. <laughs>